Section 3 UX Discovery, Assessment, and Planning Establishing the requirements for a project can present challenges, and what this involves will vary with each new client. Some clients will provide you with documentation, and others will come to the table with none. One of the first steps to take is conducting an in depth interview with the client. Even if you've received extensive documentation, don't assume that the client knows what they need to. You may find that they have different ideas about the requirements which need to be reconciled. And if possible, interview each of them. Also make sure that you know how many stakeholders are involved. Interviews can be casual or formal, in person, by phone, in written form. Aim to be as thorough as possible and follow up when you need to. Even when the client has provided requirements in the written form, it's a good idea to create your own version. The first section of a requirements document should ideally capture the objectives of the project. What is the purpose of the application and how will it serve this purpose? Great applications have a focused purpose, so ask the question, what will this app be great at? Identify the essential goals and keep them simple. In this opening section of the document, along with the purpose, state clearly what the app is and what it will do. With a clear introduction, the flow of the document should make sense. Brand identity and brand position can greatly influence requirements. So find out what the client has in mind and include it in this opening section. Some clients may have gone through the process of determining what the app will be called, developing a full statement for the brand position and identity, and creating a logo. Other clients will have done no preparation and expect it to be part of the design process. In other cases, the client's organization will have a strong brand identity, and they'll ask that those guidelines be applied to the application appropriately. Appropriately is a key word here. Throughout the process, it's your job to keep focus on best practices and great choices for the application design. So when it comes to user experience, keep the requirements document focused on what is to be achieved, not how it will be achieved. Next, create separate sections in the document for functional requirements and technical requirements. In the functional requirements section, capture details about the core features and processes. Establishing core features and processes can be approached by capturing the actions that will be available and the outcomes that are expected for those actions. As an example, let's look at the iTunes app. Apple says, iTunes is the best way to organize and enjoy music, movies, and TV shows you already have and shop for the ones you want to get. So let's translate that into available actions and expected outcomes, and then into core features and processes. From this statement, we know that the user can shop for new music. This is a core feature. And for this example core feature, we know that certain processes must be present to support it. And there are processes which support this example core feature. iTunes presents a catalog of music. It allows the user to review that music. It allows the user to purchase music. And it allows the user to download purchased music. So in the functional requirements section of the document, the processes supporting the core features can be listed out and captured as detailed descriptions of what they include. 